In this video, we're gonna walk through three kinds of gradients in Swift UI: the linear gradient, radial gradient, and angular gradient. And as you can see, we're gonna apply them to various types of buttons as an example. Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. As always, I wanna keep this video focused on the gradient, so I do have a starter project, but let me walk you through it real quick so you have the context. We have a V stack with three buttons in it, right? Button one, button two, button three. And then here, this text is how I styled the button. As you can see on the right, we have a capsule button and then a circle button. And then basically button two and three are the exact same thing, except one says angular gradient, one says radial gradient. Okay, so that's a pretty basic starter project. Uh, let's actually start working with these gradients. Okay, so let's start at the top. This first button here, which is this capsule button, this is linear gradient. Really the gradient goes in the background modifier, right? See right now our background is color of system pink. Well, now we can replace color of system pink with a gradient. However, we wanna be specific. We wanna be a linear gradient and you'll see we'll use the other ones uh, in a bit. So we'll initialize that and you see we get a gradient, a start point and an end point. So you can see a gradient takes in an array of colors and we already got a default one that kind of goes from red to blue. We're gonna change that up a bit, but you can see that's the basic idea. So I'm gonna hit return to get that autocomplete. And instead of color.red, I'm gonna go with uh, the system colors. That system, uh, we'll go teal here. We'll do uh, system purple here. That system purple. Uh, purple's probably down here a little bit. There it is. Okay, now you see the gradient uh, we got there. That's how you change the colors. Now the start point and end point, you see default to leading and trailing. And that is just left to right, essentially, right? Of course, you could flip that, go trailing to leading if you wanted to flip the colors or to flip the colors, you know, you just change the order in the array. But let's look at the options here, right? We can do dot top to dot bottom. I'll just do the dot so you can see everything, right? You can do bottom leading, bottom trailing if you want it to, you know, come at an angle. The angle doesn't really work because our button is pretty thin, but you can tell if you had a more vertical view, the gradient at an angle might work a little better. We're just gonna do top to bottom. Again, you can play around with these different uh, combinations, but you see that's a gradient top to bottom. So I'm gonna go back to leading and trailing, just command Z to get back to that. And then now in our gradient, which is an array of colors, well, I can add another color in here. We'll do that system uh, orange. There we go, add a comma after that for the array. And you can see now we have multiple colors in there. We'll even add color uh, dot system uh, pink in there, right? You can get a little crazy with this gradient, but you can start to see, it looks a little Instagrammy, but you can see I can just keep adding colors to your gradient to get the feel you want. And again, that is linear, going from leading to trailing. I just showed you how you can also change the angle as well with the start point and end point. Okay, so let's command Z back to our two colors. Uh, Cause I'm gonna refactor this gradient out, right? Cause you can imagine, you know, if you're building your own app, you know, you might have a, a brand gradient that you wanna use all over. So we're gonna mimic that. Plus it's, we don't have to type this out uh, every time. So I'm going to uh, cut this gradient, right? And then we're gonna create a variable up here called var brand uh, gradient. And that's going to equal our gradient that we have here, right? It's the system teal, system purple. And now instead of like having to write that every time in our gradient, I can just do brand uh, gradient and we will get that. Hit resume on the preview just to make sure that is working. And that will clean up the code a little bit if you're using the, the gradient uh, in many places. So let's move on to our radial gradient, which is our second button down here. And that is very similar. So instead of our background being color.system pink, it'll be a radial uh, gradient. And you can see, you get the autocomplete there. The gradient we want is gonna be brand gradient. So that's the same thing. You would pass in the gradient you created, whether it's two colors or seven colors, however crazy you wanna get, that's the gradient you pass in here. And then we wanna start this one from the center for now. And then starting radius of five is fine. End radius of 500, if you look at our button, I guess you can kind of see the purple maybe creeping in, maybe I'm seeing things, but we'll do like 120 just to show you how, you know, you bring that in and you have the teal starting at the center and then the purple gradient going out again in a, in a circle, radial gradient. Now that's starting at the center. As you can see, we have options here. Uh, let's do top, let's just do the top. So it looks like a, a light source coming down from the top and then you can change your end radius a little bit, maybe make that a little bigger, 180. And you can see now the radial gradient, you know, starts from the top and I like this because like I said, it almost looks like a light source hitting it. I mean, you'd have to tweak the colors probably and the radius of the gradient, but you can see how you can do some cool stuff with shapes with this radial gradient, like a light source. But we'll go back to center because that's you know the standard one and go back to 120 for our end radius. Now a radial gradient doesn't have to go on a circular object. Let's try it on our linear button up here. So we're gonna copy and paste a new one just for, for show here. So copy that top linear gradient one, uh, paste it down here. And then we're going to 
copy this radial gradient from our circle one and then replace our linear gradient here with that radial gradient. So you can see this second button down now, you can see the gradient starts at the center and goes out. However, because our button is, you know, that skinny capsule shape, I'll get that red square off of it, uh, you can see how it gets clipped. But you get, still get that radial gradient effect, and maybe you want to change your, your end radius to be bigger. We'll go back to that, like, 180 to spread it out a little more. Uh, you can see how you can tweak these gradients accordingly. Now let's talk about the last type, our angular gradient, and then we'll do that ghost button that you saw in the beginning, how you can have the outline of your button as a gradient as well. So those are the final two pieces before we wrap up. So the angular gradient, uh, again, similar, right? Here's our button, the background, instead of being color system pink, is now uh, angular gradient, and you initialize that. And you can see that takes in a gradient and a center. So the gradient, again, is gonna be brand gradient. And then we'll start it with the center, that's fine. Again, you can tweak and adjust that. Now you'll notice, if you look at the uh, angular gradient, you get that, let me make the text nothing so you can see it a little better, right? So we'll get rid of that angular gradient text. Now you see on the right, it's a very like sharp differential where the purple starts and the teal starts, right? It's not really like faded or a gradient. So on these angular gradients, you typically want to start and end with the same color. So for this gradient, we want to change it to teal, purple, teal, and you'll see that effect we get. So let's go up to our brand gradient, <laughs> and because we're using this everywhere, it's going to mess up our other buttons, but hey, I guess you'll get to see uh, this happen. So see, we're starting with teal, then we have purple in the middle, so we want to end with teal as well uh, for our angular gradient. So let's add uh, teal at the end. Hit resume on the preview. And now you can see that smooths that out. And then in between, you know, we can add another color. So we'll do color dot, you know, system uh, orange again, add our comma afterwards, uh, hit resume on the preview. And now you can see on our angular gradient, we added the color orange. And now we're getting a little crazy tie dye look and feel on the rest of our buttons. But this shows you how you can just tweak and play around with these gradients to get some crazy effects. Not sure you'd ever wanna use that, but I'm sure there's some use case where this would make sense. Lastly, let's create our ghost button with the outline uh, that has a gradient as well. So we're gonna copy and paste our second button. We're gonna make some changes to it. We'll put it down here in third position. So the changes we're gonna make, we're gonna get rid of this background. So now our button doesn't have a background. Let me click off of it to get rid of that red X. You can see there's no outline on our button, but it still has the frame. Now let's give that frame an outline and then make that outline a gradient. So to do that, let's actually get rid of this clip shape as well, because we're going to encapsulate that in our overlay. So we're going to do dot overlay, and then the overlay is going to be a capsule, and then we can give our capsule a stroke. And then if we scroll down, stroke has many different initializers, but we're looking for width here, right? So yeah, we want line width. And then the stroke color blue, well, you can see, now we just got a blue outline. Well, just like we did before, where we replace our background color of system pink with our gradient, we can do the same thing. So let's do a linear uh, gradient, Initialize that with a gradient. And again, it's gonna be our brand gradient, which at the moment is crazy. Uh, I'm gonna put these parameters each on one line to hopefully make it easier to read. So start point, leading is fine, trailing is fine. And let's do width five, just to like really uh, emphasize it. So now let me get rid of this red box. Now you can see our button uh, has our linear gradient with our crazy brand uh, gradient. But instead of the whole background being a gradient, we have just the stroke, the outline is a gradient. And uh, I think this is much easier on the eyes than a full crazy tie-dye looking button. So maybe this final button has a, a bit more actual uh, use case. If you're looking to improve the UI of your app with gradients, maybe not this crazy gradients, but subtle gradients are really nice, then you probably want a website or portfolio to feature that app in. And that brings me to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to help you get that iOS developer portfolio or a website for your app up and running very quickly. Now, I always say, of course, we're developers. We could learn to build it ourselves, but there's an opportunity cost to your time in learning web development, maintaining a website for all different screen sizes, all different browser types. That's a lot of work, a lot of time and effort. So I like to recommend having Squarespace completely take that off your plate. They have a ton of beautiful themes to get you started. They handle all the analytics and the SEO for you. Uh, like I said, it's just a great way to take the headache of a website off your plate. So when you're ready to get started, head to squarespace.com. And when you're ready to actually launch the website, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That wraps up the video on gradients. Hopefully you got another skill in your toolbox. Maybe not use this crazy gradient, maybe use a more subtle gradient, but uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.